Enterprises are terrible at cloud security. Why is that? Let's talk about it. Well, welcome back to the Cloud Insider, where we talk about the truth of cloud computing and how to make it work for your enterprise. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, b geek. Let's get started. So the brainchild of this was basically some study, as I saw come across my desk this week, uh, was in good news for uh, cloud security uh, around uh, use of enterprises. A uh, recent study by Tenable reveals that over one third of cloud environments are critically vulnerable due to a confluence of factors, highly privileged Publicly exposed and critically weak workloads. This alarming toxic cloud triad places these organizations at an elevated risk of cyber attacks, underscoring the necessity for immediate and strategic intervention. What's going on here has been going on for the last um, 15 years. As long as I've been dealing with cloud computing, the environments are very complex. Uh, the people who are, uh, who are uh, tasked with securing them don't understand how to do it properly, and they're misconfiguring things. So in other words, they're exposing uh, data, they're exposing storage systems, um, I wouldn't say by accident, but they're just missing out on what they need to do to set up a correct security environment. They don't understand, they don't have the training, and therefore it's exposed. The, bre the people who are hacking these systems are pretty clever, they just keep trying those resources, uh, typically can figure out where they're located via the IP addresses, things like that. And uh, through trial and error, they're able to find resources that are exposed. So the report based on the company company's telemetry of cloud security customers discovered that 74% had exposed storage or other misconfigurations. Of course, this opens the door to cyber criminals, of course. Uh, basically uh, showing that things are getting worse um, with the availability of quality security tools getting better, the talent around those tools uh, is not necessarily there. So what's occurred, the things I've been writing and speaking about, ranting about for years, the security itself, the cloud security, has gotten much better uh, in the last 10 years. In fact, it's better than the on-prem security. That's because more research and development dollars, innovation has gone into cloud security tools and technologies. However, we just don't seem to have the ability to get the talent in place. Either it's too much heterogeneity, too much complexity, too many types of security tools that people are having to deal with, that things are getting misconfigured. So it's a human error uh, at the end of the day. It's not necessarily having to do with the cloud providers or the cloud tools, but it's a problem nonetheless. So what are we going to do about it? So when they talk about the toxic triad, I kind of like that definition and explanation of a toxic triad. Cloud triad is highly privileged workloads, pub, uh, publicly exposed environments, and critically weak configurations. And ultimately, this kind of comes down to the fact that we're just not getting the best practices and understanding in terms of how we're dealing with these things. And therefore, people are constantly making mistakes and errors, and those are causing the breaches. And we're seeing this time and time again. In fact, you're probably only hearing about 10% of the breaches that actually occur that are uh, talked about in the press or probably talked about in uh, uh, companies reaching out to investors and letting them know about the breach. Uh, the other 90% of the time, 80% of the time, uh, they're not discussed. They're taken care of internally and quietly, and you never hear about them again. So what about the specific vulnerabilities? Well, publicly exposed storage uh, is the biggest issues. So improper management of access keys. Um, you know, for example, 84% retain unused keys. <laughs> That's not good. Example of high, pro pro high profile breaches include the one with the recent MGM resort, which is kind of interesting. In September 2023, just last month, NBM MGM resort experienced a significant data breach caused by the Scattered Spider Group, affiliated with the Alpha slash Backcat ransomware gang. The attack uh, disrupted operations, affected online reservations, and in casino, in -casino services. Hackers uh, access sensitive customer data, including names, contact information, driver's license number, but not financial data, uh, and the breach was estimated to cost MGM around $100 million. Uh, have the link uh, to that event in the description. You can kind of read about that. Um, of course, um, these sorts of things are going to be common occurrences because people are running around who are not necessarily sophisticated hackers, but they're trying the doors. <laughs> so they're wiggling the handles and see which ones are unlocked. 
and we're just leaving too many resources unlocked. And since these things are accessible via the open internet, uh, they're exposed. And I think it's just kind of not a matter of uh, if they're going to be uh, hacked, if you're leaving these exposed, but when, you know, kind of based on the uh, gr growing, growing sophistication of the tools that, and automation that these hackers are able to leverage today to find these vulnerabilities. Another issue is that container orchestration is becoming a major cloud security issue. We all love Kubernetes uh, and the ability to build you know, cloud native systems and all these sorts of things, but Kubernetes environments present, pre prevent another risk. Um, so the study also pointed out the same one I'm talking about. Notes that 78% of organizations have uh, uh, publicly accessible Kubernetes API servers with significant portions allowing inbound internet access and unrestricted user control. And this lacks of a security posture. This lacks security posture exacerbates potential vulnerabilities, making it crucial for organizations to employ adequate security measures. So again, what's happening is we're leveraging very complex applications, in this case using Kubernetes. We're using very uh, complex API services to access these systems, and we're not figuring out how to deal with security around a Kubernetes deployment. So you know, people are building or expert, have expertise in building and deploying these systems, and lots of people around doing a great job, you know, building Kubernetes-based deployments, and there's a reason why you want to do that, and also a reason why you don't want to do it, and that's another, that's another show. Uh, however, they're not putting in the thinking around how they're going to deal with security, and ultimately, the extra complexity and extra degree of thinking you have to think about when dealing with something like Kubernetes and container orchestration is going to lead to more vulnerabilities because we're just not putting enough time and effort uh, in that we need to to deal with the specialized security concerns for Kubernetes and, and container orchestration. So I know what you're thinking, okay, Dave, thanks, uh, Mr. Cheerful. Uh, how do we solve this problem? Um, well, there's a few strategies to consider, and I think they're pretty much you know commonsensical. So uh, you know, proactive vulnerability management would be the main one I would suggest. Prioritize vulnerability remediation, conducting regular security audits and penetration testing. And that means, by the way, using outside consultants. Don't have your own uh, security team grading themselves. They're always going to be, uh, so they're always going to get an A. Uh, so it's going to be an outside consultant or someone doesn't have uh, a relationship with the existing team to see how well those things are done. And those folks are out there. Uh, strong access control measures, implementing identity access management systems, which is always a smart thing to do. That's probably a very superior way of setting up uh, security-based systems if you don't have them in place. And the idea is that everything has an identity and we're able to configure and reconfigure um, authorization to each one of these resources. And it's a great way to deal with, uh, with complex distributed systems. Adhering to the principle of least privilege. Um, and automating monitor and response, utilizing automated tools for continuous security monitoring, uh, you know, looking at things like performance monitoring, understanding that if we're saturating the compute system, that probably could be uh, the rise of some sort of attack and recognize that pattern and the ability to alert some system to take corrective action, to uh, uh, stop that IP address from connecting your system, do any number of things. Governance, risk, and compliance, GRC. Uh, the ability to have these frameworks in place to govern how people are going to leverage these resources to deal and manage risk and to deal with the compliance systems. In other words, compliance not only in terms not only in terms of how we're dealing with legal compliance around regulations and you know state and federal um, regulations, but the ability to put governance systems around these resources and how they're accessed. So and automating those things. Staff education and training, probably the most important thing here, ongoing programs for employee security awareness, and certainly retraining and continuously training your security operations and your security development and your security engineering staff. They should be up to date on the best practices and how to build and configure these systems and understand that leaving these resources such as you know security, uh, such as storage systems exposed uh, is unacceptable and, and can be easily fixed. Uh, so this, again, is a people problem. This isn't a technology problem. Finally, and probably something that many people aren't looking at is, is resource allocation issues. In other words, this comes down to money. Uh, I just recommended that you train people and you hire good people and all this sort of stuff. That takes resources. So you need to identify the gap in resource allocation for cloud security. In other words, where you need to be versus what you have now and what funding you need to be to get there. Now, of course, these are big fights in terms of budgets and who's getting what where and 
Uh, you're never going to have perfect security, which is true. You have to uh, figure out what your uh, tolerable risk tolerance is in doing this and how that maps into a business case. All well and good, but you need to figure out how to get the resources you need to become secure. So you need to invest in security, and that's the way you do it. So that's all I have for you this week. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to uh, check out my InfoWorld blog. Check out my uh, course out on GoCloud Careers, my generative uh, AI architect course. Check out my many, many videos out on LinkedIn Learning. And don't forget to check out my book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing, wherever fine books are sold. So until next time, you guys stay real safe. Cheers.